institutional sexism. Definition, these are institutions that are uh, interacted with, with the public that then have uh, the effects of a stratified uh, gender uh, status in their institutions, like the glass ceiling. Think of you can think of any expressions or any, ex uh, any examples. Some that are easy, the glass ceiling that we've talked about, that the invisibility of how women get to a certain point in an institution and then can't move forward. And so when they say, hey man, there's a whole bunch of us that aren't going forward, it's because you're not working hard enough, because you don't do it right, because back on the individual. The, the actual institutional sexism, the discrimination, is then unexamined. Um, economic consequences of inequality, of institutional inequality, and that often results in violence against the feminine or females. Sexual harassment at the workplace, in schools, and gender inequity for boys as well. Gender relations and economics. Population growth often results in higher degree of segregation between the sexes, Population growth, population density stress does cause or can cause um, reactions to that. Um, extreme um, segregation and the definitions of values of people will always reflect the hierarchical dominance as populations grow. And this in those uh, populations explain why women are socially inferior to men and, can, and men are conferred with a higher authority. The Adam and Eve story. In that, Adam, Adam is this good guy, is the victim to, to Eve's temptation, her, her weakness, her immorality, that brings sin and death into the human species. Well, that is a mythology that is explaining patriarchy in the Jewish um this Jewish society. The Yanomama, also very patriarchal. And here is their creation, or explanation of their creation myth. Women and men have actual separate origins. Moon's blood fell to earth and became men. That is why men are so fierce. One of the men tossed a wabu fruit on the ground, which became woman. The men took turns copulating with her, she had daughters. The men copulated with the daughters. And that is how the Yanomamu came to be. And again, in this case, the men play the central roles. They are the main authority. They are the main power. Uh, so you can actually look at this, even an explanation of the myth, and see the patriarchy. Gender relations in pastoral, horticulture, and agriculture societies. Pastoral, horticulture, and agricultural societies tend to be more male-dominated because of possession of resources, Through their, uh, though there, there's variation in this. But as men um, control resources, control the farm, control the animals at a pastoral society, um, then they have more authority, more power in the society. Um, possession of resources is a cultural decision. Who has that control, again, is made up within that culture. And we can make up any kind of dynamic. In pastoral societies, women's status depends on the degree to which the society combines herding with cult cultivation. If you remember, the two types of pastoralism is nomadic, in which the entire family and the animals, or families, males, females, and their offspring, go with the animals throughout the year um, and have no place to live except for with the animals. No settlement, I should say. Transhumance pastoralism, however, does have a settlement. The women often stay at the settlement and farm and the men take the herd out. In this case, you have both males and females possessing property, have much more equitable status. The uh, female, the property is passed down the to the females along the female line and the animals down the male line. 
Gender relations in the global economy. Women's status in the modern society varies and is affected by economic development, political ideology, and globalization. I talk a lot about the United States because we're in this country and we can affect um, how this country will be. That's our job, really, even though it's uh, ignored quite often. Um, women's status in modern society. Political ideology, globalization, there are many societies that are patriarchal. There are many societies in which women don't have access. And again, this is based on um, control of economic resources. Now, in Montechico, in Peru, in 1930s, the only way a woman could get access to land was to marry. Access to status was to marry a man. And this is not uncommon in Western Europe and in other cultures too, but in Western Europe that settled uh, the New World here, um, women couldn't vote, women couldn't own property, women couldn't keep their own wages if they were allowed to get married or get, get a job. Marriage was a way for a woman to get access to resources, stability, um, and status in Western Europe and therefore Puerto Rico or Portuguese and Spanish, uh, Central and South America. As women are given more independence, as women are allowed to vote and help legislate the world that they live in, as women are allowed to make um, enough to support themselves, by the 1980s, Peru was urbanized and many of the occupants were available, uh, occupations were available to men and women. Since women could support themselves and their children, they remained single longer and, in some cases, chose not to marry at all. They could have access to resources, property, and the way to make a living without marrying a man. And by the way, that's where all those sayings come from, the gold digger and the, all this. It comes from the time when, to have any kind of status and security, females had to marry males and hopefully males of status. Who are they? Dungana May? I put these in because these are young girls that make microchips in China. But also, 94% of American flags used on 4th of July celebrations are made in China in these same sweatshops where children work 12 or more hours a day. And we take those flags to celebrate our independence.